Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And now we're talking about revisiting Nigeria's Marriage Act. The Court of Appeal ruled in Maimuna Mohamed ORS um, versus Nike Mohamed and ORS that a marriage conducted under the Marriage Act by a Muslim does not prevent them from marrying multiple wives under Islamic law, contradicting the common belief that the act guarantees monogamous marriage and inheritance rights. The ruling has major implications, especially for women who married under the act expecting monogamy and exclusive inheritance rights, as the decision allows Muslim men to marry up to four wives and distribute their estates under Islamic law, even if the marriage was conducted under the act. The court's decision raises critical questions about whether statutory marriage act, well, statutory marriages under the act apply to Muslims, the relationship between religious freedom and marriage law, and the broader implications of allowing Muslims to bypass the legal incidence of the act. The decision underscores the need to revisit Nigeria's Marriage Act, particularly in how it applies to marriages involving Muslims, to ensure clarity and fairness in the legal framework governing marriages and inheritance and to protect the rights of all individuals entering into statutory marriages. Now, joining us to unravel all of this and make sense of it is Elvis Asia. He's a legal advisor. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me on the program. All right. So um, a court recently ruled, I think that was um, sometime in August, about uh, Mimuna and Nike Mohammed. I just want you to give us a little brief overview of what happened and what the ruling was. Well, um, there's um, um, Mr. Mohammed, who was um, a military officer, married um, an evangelist, in fact, you know, a Christian, under the act, and unfortunately died. Uh, but he subsequently, before he died, subsequently married three other wives under Islamic law. And the question then arise, arose after his death as to which law uh, should apply to the distribution of the estate. Why the Christian wife uh, went to you know, the high court for the purpose of determining that because you know, she believes that, that is being a statutory marriage, that's the appropriate thing to do. Uh, the three uh, Islamic wives uh, went to the Sharia court seeking uh, to uh, you know, uphold their rights under Islamic law, or law of inheritance. And the Sharia court uh, you know, initially heard that they were right to do so uh, because the administration of uh, estate law of um, Quara states excludes uh, at the application of, of the estate law of Quara state excludes uh, uh, somebody who died, somebody who, whose estate is subject to Islamic law. Uh, the matter went to the Sharia Court of Appeal. Sharia Court of Appeal decided that uh, it was the High Court that was the proper uh, court for the resolution of the dispute in view of the fact that. Uh, the, 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 the Mr. Mohammed was uh, originally married under the Act, and that he ought to, have, you know, dissolve that marriage first uh, before uh, under the Act before going to marry uh, under the Court of Appeal. And the Court of Appeal made a distinction between customary law and Islamic law, and in effect heard that uh, the Muslim whether or not married under the Act, uh, it's not cannot be prevented from conducting uh, subsequent marriages up to the four that is permissible under Islamic law, and therefore, uh, you know that uh, it's Islamic law was applicable to the distribution of the estates. Um, that uh, was a decision of the Court of Appeal, which raises a very fundamental question, like you have, you know, uh, properly summarized. Uh, with respect to the place of, of the Marriage Act, whether the Marriage Act itself um, is applies to everybody, irrespective of religion or, or culture. Um, you know, but uh, it is hoped that this decision will go on appeal because, uh, like you rightly mentioned, it, it creates a lot of confusion for people who have uh, conducted their marriages under, under, under the Marriage Act, thinking that they were going to get a monogamous marriage thinking that the administration of the estate laws of the various states would govern their states. Uh, but with this decision, it, it becomes very difficult um, 
for you know marriages uh, like that. When we're talking about the Marriage Act, which is from the federal government, obviously, and we're talking about Islamic um, marriages as well, shouldn't the federal government one take supremacy? Does this mean now that um, the Islamic Marriage Act takes supremacy over the one that is being instituted by the federal government? Well, that is the that is the issue. Uh, quite frankly, no marriage is superior to the other. Um, you know, but the thing is that if you are married under the act, you must you are bound by the consequences that flows from it. Mm. Um, you, you cannot nobody forces anybody, including uh, Muslim, Christian, or you know uh, traditionalists uh, from my community who wishes to marry whatever how they want to marry. Nobody can force you to marry uh, under the act. Mm. But if you voluntarily decide to do that, then you are bound by the consequences of that act. I think that is where the issue is. Mm. The question, uh, I've seen a lot of writing from uh, Islamic scholars and other people on this issue, and they seem to believe that uh, the moment you are, uh, uh, you are still a Muslim, nobody can uh, stop you from, um, uh, from marrying, you know, even though you are married under the act. I, I don't think that is correct, because... The Marriage Act is a federal legislation uh, made pursuant to the exclusive list which vests uh, the powers on the federal government to make law on statutory marriages. And so when you marry under that act, you are bound by